Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I am doing some capacity testing on a used battery that I'm uh, in the process of buying uh, from one of my friends who has brought me several batteries in the past. And uh, so far, I think that this is going to be a good battery to add into the bunch. So I wanted to show you what I'm doing with it and kind of go ahead and track the progress with it so that way you guys can see how it turns out. So if you caught my previous video, um, you probably saw that I am beginning my testing of the silicate batteries off of our houseboat. Well, the testing rig that I'm going to use is this guy right here. This is a 12 volt electric heater and it pulls about 12 and a half amps consistently of electricity. So because I don't have a better way of capacity testing this right now, uh, this is going to be the fastest, most effective option I have. Now, in another video where I kind of showed you what I'm doing, I, um, if you look, this is actually not very long after that video, I am going through and testing this thing and checking it about once an hour to see its progress. So I started this test approximately an hour and 10 minutes ago. Uh, I set my timer on my watch here for two hours and we're down to 49 minutes. So that gives us about an hour and 10 minutes of runtime on this thing. So what I did was I charged this battery up till it was full and then I hooked up this little heater and um, set the timer. So after an hour and 10 minutes of a consistent 12 and a half amp draw, you saw she's still sitting at 100% state of charge. So let's see what she does. Let's see what she pulls out. Um, we are just over an hour into the test so far and she's still looking beautiful. So we'll come back and check it periodically and I will show you the, up, the update as I go. The biggest thing to uh, that I wanted to showcase here is I wanted to show everyone the capacity and the, the capabilities of these batteries. This is a used battery that I picked up secondhand. I don't know to what level this battery has been used. I don't know how consistently um, the previous owner used it uh, or its actual condition. However, if it pulls most of its rated capacity, then I am ecstatic for the price that I picked it up for because I got this thing at a screaming deal. This is the Lion Energy UT1200. So if you know anything about Lion Energy's lineup, they don't make the 1200 anymore. Um, it's called a 1200 because it is rated for 1200 1 1.2 kilowatt hours or 1200 watt hours of um, usable storage. This thing will put out um, 12 amps at a continuous rate of 150 amps draw. So when you put all that together, it is, uh, I believe, 94 amp hours. So as long as we get close to that, I'm going to be pretty ecstatic. And uh, this test will kind of show us that even on a used lithium iron phosphate battery, you sh probably are going to have plenty of life left, depending on obviously its age and use. But um, I just wanted to uh, document this and show you guys what I'm doing and how it's going. So <laughs> come back in an hour and check it out. All right, guys, we're back. It's been two hours since I started testing this used UT1200 uh, Lion Energy battery. And I am actually a couple minutes late because I was uh, in the middle of something I had to finish up. So let's uh, take a look and see where we're at. You can see, if you look at the time at the top, it's an hour later, uh, and we are 53 minutes into the third hour, or sorry, seven minutes into the third hour, 53 minutes left in the third hour. And she's just plugging away nicely, putting out heat, and she's finally reading less than 100%. And I realize we should have done this uh, at the beginning of the test, but we're at 12.95 volts after just over two hours with a sustained 12 and a half amp draw. So with that, uh, we will come back in another hour and I'll show you our progress. And uh, at the end, we'll run some numbers and do a quick calculation and see exactly what she pulled. Starting hour four. 
now 5.56 p.m. and we're five minutes into the fourth hour. She's still blowing nice and hot. We've pulled approximately 37 amp hours out of the battery. And look at that, she's reading around that 60% mark. This is under load voltage, 12.89 volts. So far, she's looking good. We'll uh, come back in another hour and uh, see how she goes. All right, so four hours in, starting hour five. Uh, we are about seven minutes into the fifth hour. So after four hours, we are still looking good and strong at around or just above 50% and still under load, 12.77 volts. Okay, guys, we are at six hours and I don't know what's going on here, but uh, we're dead. That dropped off a lot faster than I thought. We have a zero volts reading down here. So I kick that off and it goes to 0.1 volts. So I don't know if it kicked into a safety mode. Maybe we pulled too much power for too long and it um, just went to safety, but five hours, five times 13, 67 amp hours. Well, that's not quite what it's rated amp, uh, amp hours are. So um, this is still very warm to the touch. So it has not been off for more than, I'd say maybe 10 minutes at max, which by the way, we're also 10 minutes in. So, um, well, 14 minutes to be exact. So, um, I know, well, I don't know. So it, this pulls about 150 watts consistently. So if we take 150, 15 times five, 750 watt hours, and it's supposed to be rated at 1200. So, um, I'm gonna give this a couple minutes and see if it just went into safety mode and this comes back to life after a moment. Uh, actually, I think what I might do is when these go to sleep, a lot of times uh, you can wake them back, um, back up by putting a charge to them, but uh, uh, Lion actually has this reset function right here that you can see. So you're supposed to push the button. When the light starts flashing, you push and hold it until the light clears, I think, or goes solid. I don't remember. Let's find out. So it flashes. Oh. Did the BMS just reset? What just happened? I've never seen it do that before. Oh, okay. I think our BMS went into safety mode. So either way, it um, shut down, but when it did that, we got voltage back. We went from 0.1 volts to 12.3. So I think the BMS shut her down in safety, but she's still reading dead. So let's see. So I just kicked it back on. it for just a moment to see what happens but low voltage disconnect is supposed to be at 10 volts so if this guy is cutting out way before then or well so lithium iron phosphate has a, sh a steep drop-off curve when it reaches low it that drop-off drops fairly quickly um, and so, I mean, it's very possible that especially stressing, well, I mean, oh, yep, see, BMS just shut off. So we'll kick that back off. So and that's a, a good example of the safety of these things too. That BMS is going to shut this battery off and disconnect it from giving a signal um, if there's any potential of doing damage to the cells inside. Uh, 
I might have to go through and recalculate and just make sure this thing is actually pulling 150 watts like what my earlier test um, showed because if it is then I mean that's not the greatest result we're talking about 750 watt hours uh, and we should have been able to get quite a bit more than that um, my other two batteries pulled quite a bit higher capacity than 750 so that being said um, now that it's been through a full cycle I think what I'll do is I'll throw it on the battery charger let it charge up and then we can maybe run this test again just to make sure that uh, the results are accurate all right guys uh, it's another day let the battery charge up overnight and uh, make sure that it was fully charged and we're going to try this again I've got my timer ready to start and we are fully charged I just took it off of the charger so let's go ahead and kick on our heat oh we should have checked this before but it was around 3 13 13.5 13 volts so um, yeah so we've started our timer we'll come back in a couple hours I think around the um, four hour mark we will go to maybe a 30 minute interval and then take it down from there um, to 10 15 minutes or so and just try to monitor it super closely I'm really hopeful that it was just a fluke and we have better results today but honestly I don't know what to expect um, so yeah I guess I guess we'll see uh, what comes of it um, and the, the I did some more researching uh, research last night and it is a 90 amp hour battery so it's listed as a UT 1200 but it's um, 1154 watt hours and we pulled right around 750 uh, I double checked this guy it's rated to pull 150 watts con continuously so yeah um, we can see right away it's uh, we are less than two minutes in and it's already taken a ton of that surface charge right off uh, but she's looking good there so we will come back and check it out in a moment two hours down going into the third I'll do it quick 75 80 percent or so 12.9 volts so we've used approximately 300 watt hours thus far all right guys so i uh missed my timer by i don't know maybe 20 seconds or so not enough to make a difference i went off and i came out here and then i hit reset so um yeah we are what are we three hours down so going into our fourth hour and just like last time everything is looking pretty similar so I think after this cycle um, we'll have to see we might take it in 30 minute increments and uh, see what she does and how the results turn out I didn't reset the timer for an hour this time because uh, we are through four hours and I want to know if it's gonna even make I don't even know if it's gonna make it to five so I set it for a half hour this time um, and I mean voltage so far 12.82 not looking bad at all and this time she's down to two bars so four hours she's reading two bars left um, we'll come back and check her in about 30 minutes and see if we get the same results as we did last time so we are five hours down and if you remember when she cut out last time we were around this voltage 12.2 12.3 so I'm going to guess that we are really oh yeah she's giving us low voltage warning so as of right now it is 418 and we are eight minutes into the fifth hour and 
it looks like we're gonna have another consistent result here. So I'm going to do a little bit of looking into this battery, uh, maybe ask a few questions and see what's going on because at this point, especially looking at this voltage and how we're starting to drop off, um, this test looks like it's about over. I think I'm gonna call my buddy and ask a couple questions and, and see if he knows what's going on. Could be uh, worn out cells, could be an issue internally with the battery. Uh, it's also possible that um, somebody's been into this battery and maybe swapped the internals out with uh, a 700, which I don't know, but there's supposed to be screws in here. And I was just looking at that. And I know that the UT700 is the same size case and everything like that. It's just stickered to 700 because it's got a smaller battery capacity uh, and they are a little bit lighter. They're about 17 pounds, whereas the 1200 is supposed to be about 23 pounds. So seeing as how I got two test results that look like they're both going to be right at that 700 uh, watt hour range, I'm wondering if maybe this has internal swapped out. So um, I'm gonna have to give them a call and talk to them. Even if it is a 700, I mean, I would probably do some sort of marking on the case so that way I didn't ever accidentally mix it up with my other 1200. Um, and I would probably still be happy with it for the price that it's being offered to me. Um, however, I mean, that's, that's a little deceptive and, and he might not know anything about it. It might be the, the guy that he's picked it up from. I don't know. He's, he runs around with, um, several different people that play with a lot of the same kind of stuff as me. And, and so I have no idea. That's why I'm going to call and ask some questions. That's very indicative that this test is over. She's dropped three tenths of a bit. Well, almost three tenths of a volt in four minutes of, of filming. That's that's kind of that's some of that sharp um, voltage curve that I was talking about with lithium. When they they'll hold the voltage really, really well for a really long time, and then once they reach their low state of charge, then that voltage curve drops off really quickly. And I mean, you can see throughout the past five hours we've been over 12.7 volts I think almost that entire time and then in the past four minutes we've dropped three tenths of a volt so she's done all right and it just now shut off so I stood up uh, to actually look into the camera and she just shut off on her own so we'll kill that um, and let the BMS reset itself so that way I can go ahead and throw it back on the charger too. It might need to sit there for a moment, but yeah, so I just stood up and, uh, was going to talk into the camera and then it died. So, um, I don't even remember what I was going to say now. Honestly, I'm, I'm a little disappointed because I was really excited when he called me and said, Hey, I got this battery for this price. And, uh, I was all over that like hotcakes. It was really exciting. And then we did our first test and I thought, okay, that's not right. So I started looking into it last night once I concluded the first part of this test and put it on the charger. Um, I spent a bit of time last night looking it up and trying to figure out what's going on. And then I came, I, I was looking at the UT700 from Lion and then it all started to make sense. So. I am really wondering if that might be what happened is the internals got switched out. And uh, like I said, I'd still be happy with it. Uh, probably pretty close to that price point. However, uh, it's just the, the deceptive nature of it that is bothersome. Uh, so we we'll make a phone call, I'll talk to them, and uh, we'll see if we're gonna, what we're gonna do from there. All right, talk to you guys soon.